Hey gang, it's Flower Gothic. Real quick before the vid, I wanted to give a shout out to my dear, dear friend, Andrew slash Dead 12 Kind, because he appears in this video and has made significant contributions to it. Andrew is a Let's Play YouTuber who is planning on branching out to video essay content. He has a couple of good, hilarious things on the way. And he is just the sweetest human being, so it would mean a lot to me if you subscribe to him right fucking now. Do it now. Anyway, I hope you enjoy the video. This took a while to realize, and I'm just glad to share my first documentary with y'all. <laughs> enjoy! The legality of this is questionable at best, but... You know what they say, be gay, do crime. Yeah, exactly. And we're just a couple of uh, queers In one point one doing miles. illegal things. Turn right on. Technically, I'm not the one doing the illegal thing, but I am an accessory. <laughs> so I would still get pinned. You would get William penned. <laughs> yeah. Be sure to catch my face in this so we can prove that we actually like passed by the house. <laughs> it was like it was a little interesting that that one truck just like sped off. Federal agents have arrested former reality star Josh Duggar in his home state of Arkansas. He married Anna and Duggar was taken into federal custody, accused of downloading child sexual abuse material online, showing children under the age of 12. In May of 2015, he apologized for his quote, wrongdoing, after a 2006 police report revealed that he had been investigated as a teen for inappropriately touching five underage girls. He married Anna grandchildren, Mackenzie, Michael, and Marcus. Josh also ultimately confessed to having cheated on Anna, as well as to having a pornography addiction. Hey guys, it's Flower Gothic, and today we're going to be doing something a little different. In the first week of July, me and a friend of mine traveled to Arkansas, initially in the hopes of seeing the infamous Josh Duggar trial, but then to see the impact the Duggars left on Arkansas once the trial was delayed. But nothing really went as planned, so we're gonna be doing something else. I want to discuss not only my attempted Duggar vacation, as well as why I wanted to do it, I want to discuss my history of knowing the Duggars through their dumb little TLC shows, and discuss the history of the Duggars in general, especially Josh Duggars' misdirections, to put it very, very lightly because I've realized through the production of this that not only do very few people know about the horrific, horrific crimes Josh Duggar committed, but also don't really know what or who the Duggars are. And 
I know the Duggars have been covered to hell and back, but I really want to make some use of this footage and all of the work I put into this before the trial got delayed. So I'm splitting this video into three acts. Act one will describe the history of the Duggars in general. Act two will describe Josh's arrest as well as the allegations against him. And act three will be the vacation proper. As always, do not harass anyone I mention in this video. And without further ado, let's begin. If you're new to the Duggars, or as my mom calls them, the Dugars, here's a brief history of their family. James Robert Jim Bob Duggar was born on 18 July 1965 in Springdale, Arkansas a 25-ish minute drive from Fayetteville. He was raised in a conservative but not fundamentalist Christian household. He watched TV, went to school, albeit a private Christian one, and was the younger of two children. However, he grew up very poor, to the point where his mom cooked decorative rice on at least one occasion. Jim Bob would later blame this poor living situation on his father being a weak spiritual leader. Michelle Ducker was born as Michelle Annette Ruark on 13 September 1966, also in Northwest Arkansas. She was the youngest of seven children, but grew up in a secular family and went to public school. When Michelle was in high school, she became a Christian and was first visited by Jim Bob when a mutual friend invited him to accompany him to her house. Michelle doesn't remember seeing him at all, but Jim Bob quickly grew infatuated with her, praying to God to make her his. Two and a half years before we were married was the first time we met, but I don't remember that first meeting. They were actually going on church visitation. And from the moment I saw her and heard her talk, she was just such a sweet girl that at that point, I prayed that she could be mine. Sometime later, Michelle applied to work at a yogurt shop Jim Bob's mother, Mary, ran. He begged his mom to hire her and he swooped in one day when he was tasked with a repair job. Michelle was charmed by his <laughs> godliness <laughs> and they soon began to date. On 21 July 1984, about a year or two after they started dating, Jim Bob and Michelle got married in a simple budget wedding. Apparently an audio recording of it exists and they play it to their children every year, even reenacting it. This tape has not been leaked, sadly. I wish it was. Now, Michelle and Jim Bob still weren't fundamentalists. Michelle helped Jim Bob run various businesses and they used the birth control pill. However, the pill isn't perfect and they had Joshua James Duggar, the sex pest himself, on the 3rd of March, 1988. One year later, they had a tragic miscarriage and in their moment of weakness and emotional vulnerability, they were convinced that the miscarriage was God's punishment for being on birth control, sealing their fate to have children almost every year for decades to come. Throughout the early 90s, the Duggars were absorbed more and more into fundamentalism, attending a super fundamentalist financial seminar and meeting a homeschooling family, growing more interested in homeschooling their children according to God. The Duggars follow a super Christian homeschooling curriculum, engage in conservative politics, and espouse purity culture, modest dress, no kissing until marriage, etc. Now, I don't want to go too into the history of the Duggars because, again, so many channels have done it so much better than I could ever do. So, I'll leave a couple links to Dogger videos in the description if you're curious on learning more about them. And with that, let's talk about Josh Duggar's pro behavior. In 2002, Josh began to sexually assault four of his younger sisters. 
one of whom was around five at the time, touching them while they were asleep. He had the sense to confess to his father, though. His father did not have the sense to do jack shit about it. Well, okay, he did send him to a physical labor camp and had a state trooper, who later was arrested for child porn, talk to him, but nothing else. Hell, a proper police report wasn't filed until 2006. 2006! And it wasn't even initiated by a family member. It was an anonymous 61-year-old woman who emailed Oprah before the Douglas were set to appear on her show. Sent December 7, 2006. Before you air the Duggar family from Arkansas with Redacted, you need to know the truth. They are not what they seem to be. Redacted has molested Redacted while Redacted were sleeping, and their parents have been hiding the secret for a long time. Jim Bob lies to his church and his friends to make him look good. At this moment, he is in trouble with the church for lying about Redacted and things that concern the way the church members reacted. I think that you you should know the truth before they make a complete fool of you and your show. They have been on TV before and come across as a perfect family, which couldn't be further from the truth. They jump from show to show to receive gifts for their family and to make them look really good too. Please consider this and confront them about their secret. Oprah's production team ended up faxing this email to the Springdale police. And the Springdale police ultimately inquired with the Duggars regarding this indiscretion. The police report shows just how much Jim Bob and Michelle fucked up on what they could have done and instead took the easy way out thinking that everything could be solved with a little bit of faith. Fuck you! James said that in March of 2002, Redacted, who had just redacted, came to him very upset and crying. James said that Redacted had told him that Redacted had been sneaking into Redacted's room at night and had been touching Redacted on the breasts and vaginal areas while Redacted were sleeping. Apparently, Redacted were sleeping in a common room at this time. Redacted told James that this had occurred four to five times and had occurred once as one of Redacted was sleeping on the couch. Apparently, Redacted had always been asleep when these incidents occurred. James said that when Redacted later told Redacted what had occurred, Redacted, Redacted had said that Redacted remembered one time when Redacted woke up and Redacted was taking Redacted's blanket away, but Redacted did not remember anything else. James said that in July of 2002, Redacted admitted to him that one night as Redacted was sleeping, Redacted had gone to the couch where Redacted was sleeping and had fondled Redacted's breasts as Redacted slept. Redacted was later identified by James as Redacted, Redacted, and Redacted. James said that they disciplined Redacted after this incident. James said that about nine months later, in March of 2003, there was another incident. James said that Redacted was reading to Redacted, Redacted, and Redacted, was sitting on Redacted's lap. Redacted had touched Redacted's breasts and vaginal area. James said that Redacted then ran out of the room and called Redacted and told Redacted what Redacted had done. James also said that sometime during this time frame, Redacted had been standing in the laundry room and Redacted had put Redacted's hand under Redacted's dress. James said that after these incidents, he had met with the elders of his church and had told them what was going on. James said that they all agreed that Redacted needed to be put into a treatment program. James said that one of the elders was a chaplain at the Piney Ridge program at Vista Hospital. James said that they had concerns about the program at Piney Ridge because they felt Redacted might be exposed to other offenders and other things that they did not want him exposed to. James said that one of the elders was an ex-prison guard and and told them that some of the programs for juveniles were finishing schools where juveniles learned how to offend from other offenders. James said that they found out about a Christian program in Little Rock which they felt more comfortable with. James said that he could not remember the name of the program, 
but that it was conducted by a Christian ministry in the old Veterans Hospital in Little Rock, and the man who ran it was Harold Walker. James said that he thought that the program was affiliated with the Little Rock Police Department since they had a station in the same building. James said that the program consisted of hard physical work and counseling. James said that Redacta was in the program from March 17, 2003 until July 17, 2003. James and Michelle said that they were both comfortable that nothing had occurred since Redacted went through the program in Little Rock. They both felt that Redacted no longer had any problem and that all of this had been resolved. The Duggars said that Redacted had apologized to Redacted and that they had forgiven Redacted. James said that several members of their church were aware of the situation and had been supportive of the family. Despite this, the incident wasn't made public until May of 2015, when InTouch obtained a copy of the aforementioned 2006 report. As a result, Josh was fired from his job and the Duggars initiated damage control, trying to justify his actions because that's what good Christians do. Then a few months later, infamous affairs website Ashley Madison was hacked, revealing that Josh Duggar had an account on it. Not only an account, but a paid membership. But we're not here to hear about his quote-unquote stumbles in his marriage. United States of America versus Joshua James Duggar defended. Arrest warrant. 2. Any authorized law enforcement officer. You are commanded to arrest and bring before a United States magistrate judge without a necessary delay, Joshua James Duggar, who is accused of an offense or violation based on the following document filed with the court. Indictment. This offense is briefly described as follows. One count of receipt of child pornography in violation of Title 18 USC Code 2252A2 and B1 and one count of possession of child pornography in violation of Title 18 USC Code 2252A5B and B2. This warrant was received on April 28, 2021 and the person was arrested on April 29, 2021 at Fayetteville, Arkansas. So let's learn about the events that led up to and ultimately resulted in Josh's arrest. And a lot of this comes from notes from the May 5th bond hearing courtesy of Reddit user Nuggets of Chicken. They are amazing, please follow them on Reddit. So, according to the first witness of the prosecution, Special Agent with Homeland Security Investigations, Jill Faulkner, Josh illegally downloaded packages, encrypted packages that happened to have contained child pornography. On May 14 and 15, Detective was able to download two files that were in this package. The porn, according to Faulkner, was very graphic. I will not explain it here because I know my audience and I know they're going to be disturbed. I sure as hell was disturbed. <laughs> Please use ISP and the geographic location of the IP address to locate the activity and it got directed to the DHS task force to address it. Please issue a warrant to the ISP to obtain the name and account of the user. In October of 2019, the ISP revealed the account in question was owned by Joshua James Duggar with an address in Springdale. Apparently, the mapping system was out of date and the proper address was the motor business that Josh Duggar runs. Anyway, on November 8, 2019, the federal search warrant for the Carl lot was executed. When officers arrived at the scene, they encountered Josh Duggar and two individuals. Police approached with a soft approach, no weapons drawn, explained that an investigation was underway with suspected contraband electronically. This was not an arrest warrant, so the three people were free to leave. Police did not tell them case-specific facts because it would spoil statements that could be made. 
None of the vehicles, none of the uniforms worn indicated it was a child exploitation case. Josh put his cell phone and said he wanted to call his attorney. Police said the phone was under investigation and then seized the phone to prevent any spoilation of evidence. Josh remained on scene during the investigations. He was not guarded by law enforcement during the search. Police seized a desktop computer, a MacBook laptop inside an RV, and Josh's iPhone. After securing the scene, they asked Josh if he'd be willing to discuss the issues. He agreed to speak with them. Conversation happened inside a government vehicle. Other officer received verbal consent from Duggar to record the interview. Duggar spontaneously asked, What is this about? Has anyone been downloading child pornography? At that point, no one had told Duggar that child pornography was an issue in this case. Officers revealed the Miranda rights. Duggar said he owned and operated the car lot since June 2018, that he owned the desktop computer they found, as well as the MacBook and the cell phone they seized. Duggar said he owned his phone, but other family members could have access to it. Duggar declined to provide the password to the desktop or the phone to law enforcement. Duggar said he owned the MacBook, but that other family members had access to it. He said, in a response to a question from law enforcement, that he was familiar with peer-to-peer -peer file sharing networks, but did not want to comment further. Further. He said that his devices might have been associated with peer-to-peer -peer file sharing. He noted that Tor, a browser used to access the dark web, a known source of child porn, might have been accessed by the desktop. At this point, law enforcement did not have reason to believe Tor or the dark web was an issue in this case. When asked if he was familiar with BitTor, Duggar declined to answer that question. At this point, law enforcement explained that the investigation involved someone had been using BitTorrent or other peer-to-peer -peer networks from that car lot to access child porn involving children between the ages of 5 to 10. When asked whether he had any reason to suspect or had seen anyone using his computer accessing child porn, Duggar said, I'd rather not answer that question. Officers found BitTorrent and Tor on the desktop. Officers found also, Covenant Eyes on the computer, which is a fundamentalist-owned desktop app that tracks your browsing activity and holds you accountable for watching pornography or other more unsavory activities. Information from Covenant Eyes indicated the program was registered to Josh and Anna Duggar. On May 13, 2019, a Linux partition had been installed on the computer. A Linux partition can divide the hard drive of the computer into two isolated sections that work independently. The Linux partition was password protected, but the last four digits were used for a variety of his counts over the years. Linux partition did not have Covenant Eyes installed on it, so activity would not have been detected by the account. On the MacBook, there was BitTorrent as well as Covenant Eyes. Duggar had backed up his iPhone to that MacBook, which allowed law enforcement to obtain text, photos, etc. from the MacBook. On May 14, at 4.58 p.m., Tor browser was used to access porn sites associated with rape and files associated with child porn. Video was downloaded. At 5.38 p.m., user accessed BitTorrent. Two videos were downloaded. Little Rock Officer was notified. On May 15, 2019, at 11.35 a.m., computer user downloads three torn files associated with child porn. Throughout the course of the day on May 15, Josh Duggar sends texts to 22 members of the Duggar family for unrelated matters. Computer also gets used to write reviews under the name Joshua. At 5.25 p.m. on the same day, user of desktop downloads a file called DD. Faulkner says that this series ranks in the top five of the worst CP he has had to imagine. It is believed that DD stands for Daisy's Destruction, a horrible, horrific, like, I, I, it's bad. It's not even gonna go any further than that. It's bad. At 6.56, same day, user of desktop downloads a zip that contains 65 images of child porn. On May 16, user of desktop downloads a file called Pedomom. The zip had been opened and the child porn images had been viewed by desktop. Approximately 200 images of child porn were located on the desktop. Which means... Yeah. Yeah. Friends and family testified at the time that Josh had a pornography addiction. And also... While Josh technically turned himself in, he had received word from his attorney who had received word from DHS that there was going to be a warrant executed and that DHS agents followed him as Anna drove him to turn himself in as they didn't want Duggar arrested in an area where children were. And thus, on the 29th of April, Josh was arrested for receipt and possession of child pornography. But 
Sadly, he was released on probation before his trial. Albeit under the supervision of guardians. But who are these guardians? LeCount and Maria Reber. LeCount Reber is a 49-year-old man who works in Veterans Affairs who used to be a volunteer chaplain at the very prison Dego was held, but it had to stop due to COVID. His wife, Maria, is a 53-year-old housewife. They have two children, both adults, Lemuel and Hannah. Lemuel is a college graduate who helps run this strange right libertarian channel that I might do my own video on one day, to be honest. <laughs> Hannah teaches piano to children. The Reavers have been in the Duggar circles for years, mostly with Jim, Bob, and Michelle. Fuck. The Reavers have been in the same circles as the Duggars for years, mostly with Jim, Bob, and Michelle. However, LeCount and Maria are not very competent to say the least. LeCount himself admitted to not being tech savvy and didn't know Josh was savvy enough to install a Linux partition. Neither seem to have known Joshua well, and their 22-year-old daughter still lives with them, by the way. And Maria said she would not leave Josh alone with her. They said that they would contact the probation office if Josh violated his terms, but would they? Would they, knowing what we know about the Duggar Circle? But Josh was still released, under these conditions. United States District Court for the Western District of Arkansas, United States of America versus Joshua James Duggar. Order setting conditions of release. It is ordered that the defendant's release is subject to these conditions. One, the defendant must not violate federal, state, or local law while on release. Two, the defendant must cooperate in the collection of a DNA sample if it is authorized by 34 U.S. Code 40702. Three, the defendant must advise the court or the pretrial services office or supervising officer in writing before making any change of residence or telephone number. Four, the defendant must appear in court as required and, if convicted, must surrender as directed to serve a sentence that the court may impose. The defendant must appear at John Paul Hammerschmidt Federal Building, 35 East Mountain Street, Room 509, Fayetteville, Arkansas, 5. The defendant must sign an appearance bond if ordered. It is further ordered that the defendant's release is subject to the conditions marked below. 6. The defendant is placed in the custody of LeCount and Maria Reber, Elkins, Arkansas, who agrees to A. Supervise the defendant, B. Use every effort to assure the defendant's appearance at all court proceedings, and C. Notify the court immediately if the defendant violates a condition of release or is no longer in the custodian's custody. Signed, May 6, 2021. 7. The defendant must A. Submit to supervision by and report for supervision to the U.S. Probation Office. B. Continue or actively seek employment. D. Surrender any passport to U.S. probation. E. Not obtain a passport or other international travel document. F. Abide by the following restrictions on personal association, residence, or travel. Travel restricted to Western District of Arkansas, Fayetteville Division, unless given approval prior from the U.S. Probation Office. K. Not possess a firearm, destructive device, or other weapon. L. Not use alcohol excessively. M. Not use or unlawfully possess a narcotic drug or other controlled substances defined in 21 U.S. Code 802 unless prescribed by a licensed medical practitioner. N. The defendant shall not purchase, possess, use, distribute, or administer marijuana, or obtain or possess a medical marijuana card or prescription. This condition supersedes standard condition number 7M with respect to marijuana only. If the defendant is currently in possession of a medical marijuana card, 
he slash she will turn it over immediately to the probation office. Q. Participate in one of the following location restriction programs and comply with its requirements as directed. 2. Home detention. You are restricted to your residence at all times except for employment, education, religious services, medical, substance abuse, or mental health treatment, attorney visits, court appearances, court-ordered obligations, or other activities approved in advance by the pretrial services officer or supervising officer. R. Submit to location monitoring as directed by the pretrial services office or supervising officer and comply with all of the program requirements and instructions provided. You must pay all or part of the cost of the program based on your ability to pay as determined by the pretrial services office or supervising officer. S. Report as soon as possible to the pretrial services office or supervising officer every contact with law enforcement personnel, including arrests, questioning, or traffic stops. T. Must not possess slash view pornography slash erotica of any kind. Shall not access or utilize an internet capable device. All internet capable devices in the residence shall be password protected. No contact with minors, including family, siblings, slash members, with the exception that he may have supervised visits with his children. Advice of penalties and sanctions. To the defendant, you are advised of the following penalties and sanctions. Violating any of the foregoing conditions of release may result in the immediate issuance of a warrant for your arrest, a revocation of your release, an order of detention, a forfeiture of any bond, and a prosecution for contempt of court and could result in imprisonment, a fine, or both. While on release, if you commit a federal felony offense, the punishment is an additional prison term of not more than 10 years, and for a federal misdemeanor offense, the punishment is an additional prison term of not more than one year. This sentence will be consecutive to any other sentence you receive. It is a crime punishable by up to 10 years in prison and a $250,000 fine or both to obstruct a criminal investigation, tamper with a witness, victim, or informant, retaliate or attempt to retaliate against a witness, victim, or informant, or intimidate or attempt to intimidate a witness, victim, juror, informant, or officer of the court. The penalties for tampering, retaliation, or intimidation are significantly more serious if they involve a killing or attempted killing. If, after release, you knowingly fail to appear as the conditions of release require or to surrender to serve a sentence, you may be prosecuted for failing to appear or surrender and additional punishment may be imposed. If you are convicted of 1. An offense punishable by death, life imprisonment, or imprisonment for a term of 15 years or more, you will be fined not more than $250,000 or imprisoned for not more than 10 years or both. An offense punishable by imprisonment for a term of 5 years or more, but less than 15 years, you will be fined not more than $250,000 or imprisoned for not more than 5 years or both. Three. Any other felony, you will be fined not more than $250,000 or imprisoned not more than two years or both. 4. A misdemeanor, you will be fined not more than $100,000 or imprisoned not more than one year or both. A term of imprisonment imposed for failure to appear or surrender will be consecutive to any other sentence you receive. In addition, a failure to appear or surrender may result in the forfeiture of any bond posted. Acknowledgement of the defendant. I acknowledge that I am the defendant in this case and that I am aware of the conditions of release. I promise to obey all conditions of release to appear as directed, and surrender to serve any sentence imposed. I am aware of the penalties and sanctions set forth above. Signed, May 6, 2021. In mid-June 2021, Josh Duggar's lawyers requested a continuance of the trial to February with this justification. This is a complex case arising out of a several-year federal investigation concerning allegations involving both the so-called dark web and peer-to-peer -peer BitTorrent file-sharing networks. 
Based on the discovery provided to date, the government's allegations largely center on computer forensic evidence and anticipated expert opinion testimony. The government utilized the services of two government-affiliated computer forensic experts during its investigation. The defense has retained an independent computer forensic expert who must conduct a computer forensic examination of each of the devices at issue, a time-consuming process that requires review at a government facility for the one device the government alleges contained child pornography. The defense expert must also conduct a time-intensive process of reviewing the remaining devices that the government does not allege contained child pornography. Indeed, based on litigation to date, it appears the government intends to make evidentiary use of one or more of those devices. Thus, given the complexity of the allegations and the scope of the digital discovery at issue, the defense's computer forensic expert anticipates her review and subsequent analysis of the relevant evidence may take several months. <gasps> Furthermore, the defense requires additional time to complete its review of the discovery and, separately, to pursue certain investigative leads based on the discovery. In particular, based on the discovery disclosed to date, it appears there are certain key witnesses whom the government did not interview and certain sources of possible evidence the government did not obtain during its investigation. The government has disclosed voluminous discovery in some respects. However, in other respects, the defense has expressly requested additional discovery but has not received it. For example, at the detention hearing in this case, the government's special agent who supervised this investigation testified that this investigation originated out of a Little Rock Police Department. Question. Okay, now, special agent, you testified that this investigation began in May of 2019. Is that correct? Answer. That is correct. Question. And you testified that a detective in Little Rock named Amber Calmer was the initial law enforcement officer investigating this case. Is that correct? A. Answer. Yes, sir. However, despite multiple requests by the defense, the government has turned over virtually no discovery regarding Detective Calmer's investigation. Not a single police report or document setting out the scope of the Little Rock Police Department's actions in connection with this case. Remarkably, the government also recently disclosed, for the first time and only by way of a screenshot of an unidentified database, that two other Arkansas state law enforcement agencies allegedly participated in this investigation at least in a minimal capacity. The search warrant applications make no reference to these agencies. The special agent's testimony at the detention hearing made no mention of these agencies, and the remainder of the discovery does not reveal which agencies participated and what, if anything, these agencies did. At the detention hearing in this case, the government's DHS HSI special agent who supervised this investigation testified only that this was a DHS HSI case that originated with the Little Rock Police Department. Finally, the defense requests a trial date in or after February 2022 to give Duggar sufficient time to fully prepare a defense in this case and due to certain scheduling conflicts during the remainder of 2021. Specifically, Duggar's lead counsel, Justin Gelfand, has federal criminal trials scheduled to begin in July 2021, September 2021, October 2021, and November 2021, all of which were scheduled in rapid succession as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic and the inability to hold federal jury trials at earlier dates. Section 3. Conclusion Based on the foregoing, Duggar respectfully requests that this court enter an order continuing the trial in this case to a date in or after February 2022. Duggar submits that the ends of justice served by granting this requested continuance outweigh the best interests of the public and the defendant in a speedy trial. See 18 U.S. Code number 3161. <sighs> 
the prosecution responded by deconstructing the most ridiculous of the justifications and saying that they would be okay with a much shorter continuance. <sighs> Additionally, on May 11th, 2021, at the request of the defense, the United States offered to provide the defense a digital copy of the second computer containing the corroborate evidence, text messages, digital photos, etc., for their expert to review. To facilitate said defense request, the United States told the defense to provide a hard drive to Homeland Security Investigations in Fayetteville so the information could be uploaded thereto and returned to the defense. Defense. On or about June 17, 2021, HSI and Fayetteville received the requested hard drive from the defense. The United States anticipates providing the digital copy of this computer to the defense expert. The United States anticipates providing the digital copy of this computer to the defense expert while she is at the Phoenix HSI office this week. Notably, the amount of time required to review this corroborative evidence should be comparatively short. Given the review, the evidence of the charged crimes is scheduled to take three days or less. Consequently, the government does not oppose a reasonable continuance of approximately three months to facilitate the defense experts' review and opinion described above, as this is common practice in computer-based child exploitation cases. But as communicated to the defense counsel prior to the filing of the instant motion, there exists no legally or factually valid reason supporting a continuance until February of 2022. Ultimately, the judge sided with the prosecution. And now, what you all have been waiting for. My attempted Duggar vacation. Originally, I wanted to see the Josh Duggar trial, as the first two days would coincide with a brief break I had between summer classes. My friend Andrew stepped up to be my safety buddy so I wouldn't be found dead in a river. But a week before we left, we were all set to go, and the continuance was granted. So that left me in a bit of a pickle. And then I realized that one of my documentary ideas was to go to Arkansas and see the legacy the Duggars left in the area they lived in. So I decided to pull that instead. Andrew was still on board and everything seemed to be working out. <laughs> so Monday rolls around, I wake up early and get ready to go. Well, good morning, y'all. It is about 7.55 a.m. on this lovely Monday, July the 5th, 2021. I'm just about to head out for this journey. I have to get gas, drive down south, pick Andrew up, and then it's all the way to Fayetteville. Woo! I just gotta make my bed real quick. And put my shoes on. Can you see the shoes? Good. Forgive me for my um, messy packing. I am not the neatest of people. But, um, yeah. I'm not going to show you all my drive down south because it's going to be very uneventful. It's just going to be me listening to my Spotify playlist. But, um, I'll catch you later. I drove for an hour or so to pick up Andrew before we headed off to Arkansas. We ended up stopping in Longview as a kind of halfway point, five hours out of Houston, five hours before Fayetteville, so we could switch drivers and eat. We just made it to Oklahoma. Woo! We just passed the border. No. Uh, nice. Pretty uneventful. Yeah, it was it was just a sign. Yeah, it was. It's like welcome to Oklahoma, the one state you forget where it is on the map. Because nobody gives a fuck about Oklahoma. Yeah. Maybe because there were no songs written about it. There's a musical written about it. Never mind, I was <laughs> corrected. It's about as uh, exciting as you'd expect. 
we have another four hours of driving to go. And it's gonna be just as riveting as it's been. Just this time in a different state. Yeah. Woo! That, that's what makes it more interesting. Yep. I've always flown over Oklahoma, <laughs> never driven through it. And I will continue to fly over Oklahoma because, oh my god, Oklahoma, what the fuck? It's not even like a creepy state either. It's just like, yeah, welcome to Oklahoma. Just enjoy your stay or whatever. I'm not your fucking mom. So, um, a couple miles back, we just passed like a restaurant and uh, it was this oyster restaurant. What was it named? It's called Shuck Me. Yeah. And we're at the point in this drive where anything is entertaining, so. Hold on, let me, let me do it. Hold on. Let me do it. Okay, okay. Like. Hold on. This is, this is goofy during sex. Oh, shuck me. <laughs> oh, shuck me. You know how to shuck me just right quick. <laughs> oh, shuck. Shock me, Donald! <laughs> Your duck gun is just right! <laughs> I cannot do that voice. Shaggy's like, Zoinks, man! Just shuck me already, Fred! Just shuck me right in my ass, boy! <laughs> SpongeBob is like, eh. <laughs> I can't do the SpongeBob laugh. Ah! Ah! <laughs> shuck me, Patrick! Ah! <laughs> Yeah, we just needed to share that with y'all. Mr. Grubbs is like, ah, shuck me, low on profits again. Nah, 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 nah. <laughs> oh, we can't, we can't forget the old time favorite. No, shuck me, daddy. <laughs> we yeah. made it, gang. I can finally film. Has already recorded a few things beforehand. Yeah. Calling you out on your own fucking video. <laughs> Fuck you. Okay. <laughs> but we made it. We finally made it to Arkansas. God. Uh, 14 miles to go. I need a. Oh my gosh. We're getting there. We're getting there. An hour away. Now we're in the state. Yeah. Hooray. We're in Arkansas. Yeah, I am. Apparently, the um, Arkansas Oklahoma border has a Native American casino. I did not know that. Which is very interesting. Yeah. All right, kids, we made it. We made it to Fayetteville. Woo! Doesn't it look riveting? Well, we're, we're still not quite downtown yet, but we're getting there. New construction. Ooh, construction. Lovely <laughs> Ooh. The five-hour shifts ended up becoming our undoing, though. Because the next day, Andrew got sick. Like, I had to take him to urgent care. <laughs> Feeling better, Andrew? A little bit. Yeah, it's been a it's been a wild morning. Yeah, I'm not sleepy. He's fine now. He's doing a lot better. It was just the stress of driving and a lot of other things just kind of weakened his immune system. We were still able to view some Duggar sites. We got to see the church that the Caldwells run. left that is the lighthouse baptist church that is the caldwell family church it's a lot smaller than i thought it was going to be this is where um kendra duggar and the caldwell goes you can see there's a patriotic sunday join us this sunday 11 a.m to 1 30 p.m and a giant ass american flag at the front this is depressing we're not going to stop there because we were burst into flames the abandoned car lot that Josh used to run and use to download the horrific child porn. 
So um, we're here. We're at um, Joss Stugger's abandoned um, car rental place. No, not car rental. Used car sailing place. Uh, Andrew has advised me to not get out of the car and actually like look around. So yeah, there's the little shack where I think all the um, CP was downloaded. And um, yeah, there's nothing else really to it. Unless we actually win on the property, which we're not going to do. Nope. Wonderful. We got to see one of the stores that the diggers shop at to buy used and save the difference. Yeah, it closes at 6. Ah, uh, I'm guessing it's a little after 6. Yeah, it's almost 7. Oh. Anyway, we're here. <laughs> we're here at the Samitarian shop. This is where the Duggars buy used and save the difference. It's not this specific sanitarian shop, but um, I couldn't find it. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. We got to go to a restaurant that the Duggars frequent and mock the hand sex that Josh and Anna often performed early on in their engagement. Though, it probably never stopped. <laughs> yeah. There we go. And of course, we went to the infamous mini golf course where Jim Bob humped Michelle in front of their daughter Jessa and her then boyfriend, I'm not really sure what you call a courtship partner, now husband Ben Seawald. Here's proof. So Andrew, tell us what we're doing. Uh, we're playing mini golf. Yep, we're playing mini golf. This is, this is what our life has come to. I think it's important to kind of talk about the boundaries we set for ourselves, you know, with. <laughs> perfect, perfect, yeah, there it goes. Oh my, almost. You're doing great. Thanks. <laughs> you are really good at this game. Hey, is it turning on? <laughs> <laughs> You're doing great. <laughs> Bend your knees a little bit like this. <laughs> Bend your knees a little bit. You guys watch this. Don't don't try this at home. Okay. It's actually married. Okay, you ready? I think he just teases the ones that are in a courtship.
You're doing great. Thanks, babe. <laughs> Yay! To just kind of tell him, this is what you've got to look forward to. But you can't do this yet. What have y'all thought about kissing? I think it's something that's really uh, special if you save it for your wedding day. What do you think, Jess? Yeah, I agree. <laughs> My parents, they trust us. They've trained us since we were young. So how was that experience? It was interesting. It was the same golf course where Jim Ball pumped Michelle. That was the only reason we went. <laughs> and it was interesting. And one last surprise also happened on the trip. You see, I was able to decipher vaguely where the Duggars lived, and that gave me a bit of an idea. So guys, guess where we're headed? We're going to be going to the Duggar compound. Well, we're not actually going to be going inside there because, you know, that would be illegal and they have no idea who the fuck I am, but we're going to at least look at it. Hopefully there will be a place to like pull over so I can at least like stand outside it, but um, we're not sure about that. Nice little neighborhood though, like nice little houses. recommend getting We're out. We're not getting out. We are not getting out. It looks like one of them is outside. We are not getting out. Yeah. But we saw it. Do Please do not ask which um, people were outside. We're too far away to see because this is a very hilly area and they're like below with the elevation the road's on, but we can now say that we saw it. Wednesday, sadly, I don't have much footage for. Andrew was still recovering from his illness and we ended up just spending most of the day at the hotel. I caught him up to speed with what the Duggars are and we explored the town a little. That artist wig, shaggy dude wig, um, that 70s guy wig. Mr. CEO wig. Oh, Mr. C oh my god. <laughs> and on Thursday, we drove back. And honestly, despite the fact that we did very little in terms of Duggar related activities, this was still a learning experience because, you know, things never go as planned, but that's okay. I originally wanted to do this trip for the trial, but then it got delayed and I couldn't even get like half the footage I wanted, but I want to try this again and traveling in and of itself was worthwhile. And I guess this is a little more lighthearted than I thought it was going to be, but there is some darker stuff coming soon and, you know, sometimes you gotta smile at what's going on. Thank you.